Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and one of the biggest questions I and a lot of you have had since these first M1 Macs were released is what's next for Apple in their chip design, and can Apple make chips that are powerful enough to go into their highest end desktop computers? Well, today we have a new report from Mark Gurman and Debbie Wu from Bloomberg that goes over just this question and what Apple's ambitious plans are for their chip design for the iMac and the Mac Pro, including designs that go up to 32 high performance cores and dedicated graphics cards that might just outperform AMD and Intel. First off, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, this is not my usual desk setup, and I'm actually working on a desk setup video for the brand new M1 Mac Mini and some of the accessories I use for it. So if you're interested in seeing that video, seeing that desk setup, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because it's going to be released very soon. All right, back to the topic at hand. Just how powerful will Apple's next chips be and when can we expect to see them? Well, according to this Bloomberg report, Apple is working on multiple designs for their M series of chips, all with different core counts and some with ambitious designs. Right now, Apple is targeting to release a design with 16 power cores and four efficiency cores that would be targeted for higher end MacBook Pros and iMac models. Okay, now when I gave you my last update on the next generation of Macs, I said I expected to see a design with eight performance cores. But the fact that Apple is already targeting what would technically be a 20 core design if you count those four extra high efficiency cores in their MacBook Pros and iMacs, that is just crazy. Right now, the highest end MacBook Pro ships with eight cores, the Intel iMac ships with a 10 core processor, and even the iMac Pro maxes out at an 18 core processor. In fact, in this Bloomberg article, they even point out how this chip design is more ambitious than what some industry experts expected that Apple would be able to pull off in the next two years. And yeah, if Apple actually ships this next M1X or M2 processor with a design that has 16 high performance cores, that would probably lead to a dramatic performance increase over what we are seeing with Intel's chips and already with what we get with the M1 processor, which only has four high performance cores. Those machines are already outscoring the 16 inch eight core MacBook Pro in some tasks. Now, I can't even really imagine just how powerful this version of Apple Silicon is going to be, not to mention the efficiency gains of these processors when you compare them directly against what Intel is offering. Now, while Apple is targeting 16 high performance cores for these next Macs, Gurman and Wu also mentioned that Apple is working on variations of these processors with only 12 high performance cores enabled. So while Apple is targeting 16, we could see lower core counts based on how production of these chips actually go during the manufacturing process. And Apple is also targeting even lower eight core designs like I mentioned in my last video. So while Apple is ambitious, we could see lower core counts based on how the production of these chips actually go during the manufacturing process, which is known as fabrication. And more specifically, what Apple is probably going to be doing here is called chip binning. Remember when Apple released the new iPad Pros this year that had an A12Z processor with an eight core GPU instead of a seven core GPU? Well, this is exactly what chip binning is. When Apple first made the A12X, it was probably aiming to have eight GPU cores enabled, but during the manufacturing, some or most of those chip designs were faulty with maybe one of the GPU cores not working. So Apple decided just to disable that GPU core and ship them as a seven core GPU design with the A12X. When Apple perfected this manufacturing process, they were able to get higher yields of the eight core GPU count. And for the A12Z, they enabled that extra core that used to be disabled. Intel already does this with their own chips too. If you ever picked out a processor before and were deciding between an i3, i5, i7, or i9, it's likely that some of those lower end versions of those processors 
were just ones that failed to meet certain specifications for the higher end variant. Basically, you could design a Core i7 processor that failed to meet some of the standards of that i7 processor, disable core counts or some other thing in the manufacturing process or lower the clock speed, whatever you had to do, and then ship them out as an i5 variant, even though both of those chips were made on the same chip fabrication process. This is basically what Apple's process will be for these next generation of M series chips. What is unclear is if Apple will continue to target the 16 core design and have lower yield counts. If they have lower yield counts, they could then disable CPU cores and either ship those all in a 12 core or an eight core design or what I'm really interested to see is maybe make classifications of these M series chips. So for example, on the next 13 inch MacBook Pro, maybe that ships with the high performance core design, then the chips that meet the higher standards could do a 12 core design for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And then the highest yield chips, the one that Apple is targeting, the 16 core design, that could go towards the highest end iMac. Right now, that's how Intel and AMD would handle this process, but it's unclear at the moment because Apple isn't selling these chips to anyone else. And Apple could just choose to only design one chip for their next series of Macs and hold off until they are able to perfect the manufacturing process, but it's likely we could see multiple options, especially if you look at the current M1 MacBook Air, which actually does have two different chips that probably came down to the binning process because on the lowest end MacBook Air, you get seven GPU cores rather than eight GPU cores. Just like with the iPad Pros, it's likely that these were all targeting eight core GPUs and then some of them just weren't up to the standard and Apple decided to ship them with one GPU core disabled. Now, like I said, Apple is planning to introduce this chip into the next MacBook Pros and iMacs and Apple is planning for the first versions of these to be ready by spring of 2021. So I would expect that these next M1X or M2 Max would be announced around Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, which takes place sometime in June. Although Bloomberg reports do acknowledge that some of these computers may be held back until fall of 2021, which just seems like an eternity away at this point. Now, if you thought a 16 core design was ambitious, that's not even the best of what Apple is planning to release because Apple is also developing an M series chip specifically designed for the Mac Pro their most powerful desktop computer. This apparently would result in a redesign with a Mac Pro that is half the size. And Apple is targeting a design with 32 high performance cores. Right now, the Intel version of the Mac Pro maxes out at 28 cores. So this wouldn't be that drastic of a change in terms of the number of cores that Apple is able to deliver. But when you consider how powerful Apple's chips are in single core performance and how efficient they are, it makes sense that Apple is planning to shrink the Mac Pro in half. And if these chips perform anything like they do on the current M1, it stands to reason that with 32 cores, they should be able to just leapfrog Intel even in these higher core CPUs. Now, CPUs are great, but one of the biggest questions I've had during this whole chip transition is what happens when we get to these higher end Macs that use dedicated graphics cards? Well, it seems like Apple may have the answer by not using Nvidia or AMD, but by just building their own dedicated GPUs for their products. Right now, the M1, of course, ships with an integrated GPU, and for the next versions of the MacBook Pro and iMac, Apple may choose to also ship it with an integrated GPU, but with way higher core counts. Apple is apparently testing 16 and 32 GPU cores in their next generation Macs for those products. However, what's really exciting is that Apple apparently is also working on even more powerful, as this Bloomberg article mentions, pricier, ambitious graphics cards that can be outfitted with 64 or 128 dedicated GPU cores. This is being aimed at the highest end machines for release in late 2021 or 2022, and that's probably being prepared for the new Mac Pro. Apparently these chips would be several times faster than what Apple already has in the Mac Pro. Honestly, 
This is one of the areas where I'm most interested to see what Apple does with their chip architecture. We already know that they're producing amazing chips in terms of CPU performance, but what I really want to see is an even more powerful GPU for their higher end chips. With the combination of powerful CPUs and GPUs paired together with Apple's unmatched efficiency for their desktop processors, we are on the verge of a paradigm shift in computing that will really shake up not only Apple's products, but the entire PC industry. And it's so exciting to be on the forefront of covering all of these new developments. All right, everyone, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave me a like. If you wanna see more about Apple's future chips, make sure you subscribe for future updates. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.